The crypto bear market has many seasoned crypto holders calling on their communities to take advantage of this opportunity by finding promising coins and tokens for the next crypto bull market. However, doing your own research is easier said than done, especially when it comes to cryptocurrency. And though we've done a video on this topic before, the way we do our research here has evolved. So today I'm going to tell you exactly how we research cryptocurrencies here at the Coin Bureau so that you can find the best coins and tokens and make the next crypto bull run a life-changing event. Before we dig, you need to know about this gig. Financial advisor is not my config. I am an educator and entertainer who will make your brain big. Please contact a financial advisor if your portfolio looks like a rotten fig. Now, if this is your first time here, my name is Guy and I can confirm that crypto is not going to disappear. That's why I create the highest quality crypto content to help you explore this exciting new frontier. Coins, tokens, news and reviews explained in a way that's simple and clear. So, if this fills you with cheer, subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell to become my peer. Now that we're in gear, let's look at what you need to persevere in the crypto sphere. The first step to researching a crypto project is to find its official YouTube channel. If you can't, then it's possible that this YouTube channel is under the name of the company that built the project or the nonprofit which oversees its development. In some cases, the project may not have a YouTube channel at all, and in these cases, you should try and find a community-run channel or even a YouTuber who covers this crypto project exclusively. Now, crypto-specific YouTubers can be extremely helpful if you want to keep up with what's going on. Assuming you found a YouTube channel for the project, go to its videos and scroll all the way down until you find the first one. Be sure to take note of the date this first video was posted as this will be relevant when you check when the project was founded. Besides the date the first video was posted, you want to assess how frequently the official YouTube channel of this project has been uploading and how many views those uploads have. You can even sort the videos based on views to get a sense of what the project is known for in practice. After that, skim through the video titles to see if there's anything that you think might be relevant to watch, such as an explanation of what the project is or how it works, a roadmap release or update, and most importantly, interviews with the project's founders. Now, if you watched our video about how to spot a shitcoin, you'll know that the founders of a crypto project can be a strong indicator of whether that coin or token is worth your time and money. Case in point, many experienced investors focus on the founders, including many crypto VCs. Watching interviews and taking notes should be considered as the bread and butter of your research process. Listen closely to why the founder started the project, their explanation of how the project works, what they do at the project, and what future milestones they foresee for it. Also, Consider the consistency of these responses across interviews, as this will reveal whether they're the real deal or just making things up. If you're lucky, the founder will admit that there are issues with their project and explain what they are. Now, not only is this a sign of humility, but it's also very important information to know. Depending on the age of the project and how talkative the founder is, you might find dozens or even hundreds of interviews. If that's the case, sort them chronologically, i.e. based on the time they were uploaded, and choose one or two from each month. Pro tip, use YouTube search settings for this. Once you've got a grasp of how the project got started, how it works, and how the founder is involved, you can turn your focus to things like milestones and challenges, which are typically discussed at the end of each interview. Another pro tip, use the timestamps in the description and listen at 2x speed if you're pushed for time. The second step to researching a crypto project is to look at authoritative secondary sources such as CoinMarketCap, Binance Research, and especially Masari. On CoinMarketCap, you typically get a short summary of the project when you scroll down the page, and sometimes 
CoinMarketCap will even have an in-depth explainer on their crypto education hub called Alexandria. If you can't find a summary, chances are the project is new or not very well known. As for Binance Research, googling the name of the project plus the words Binance Research or Binance Academy should give you some very useful resources. If you don't find anything, that's again because the project is either new or not very well known, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. With Masari, you should be able to find most, if not all, the info you need, unless the project is fresh out of the gates or extremely obscure. You'll find this info by clicking on the Profile tab of the project's main page. I'll reiterate that you should worry if you can't find any info about the project you're researching on these websites. If you can't even find any info about the project on the websites of the exchanges it's trading on either, then that means you'll have to focus on primary sources. Now, I should note that authoritative secondary sources can be a double-edged sword because while they often provide very high-quality profiles about crypto projects, it's very rare that they're ever fully up to date. Even so, they tend to have all the info you need to make the concepts about that crypto project click, especially the tokenomics. This is why Masari is such an amazing resource. The token economics section in a cryptocurrency's profile can be a goldmine, and we often use images from this section. If you can't find any info about a crypto project's tokenomics via any of the secondary resources I just mentioned, the last place to check is ICO tracking websites like ICO Drops. These should have all the details you need to get a sense of whether most of the supply is in circulation or held by insiders. Another useful resource related to tokenomics is a website called Crunchbase. This site will tell you how much money the crypto project has raised in total and when these funding rounds took place. You can find that info by clicking on the Total Funding Amount widget on the main page. Note that the funding rounds on Crunchbase are not always correct, and you might have to put the name of the company that built the project or the nonprofit that coordinates its development in to get the funding information for the actual project itself. Now, post ICO funding is actually one of the most important factors to keep in mind when analyzing crypto projects during a bear market because it means they have no shortage of runway to keep building. You can find out what the other factors are using the link in the description. Anyways, the third step to researching a crypto project is to look at that project's website from top to bottom, and I mean that in every sense of the word. Leave absolutely no stone unturned. A good place to start is with the terms and conditions and privacy policy pages, which can usually be found at the bottom of a project's website. Feel free to read through both if you have the time, but the only info that's really important here is the name of the entity that's running the website. If you're lucky, you'll see this info at the very bottom of the website's main page. As I mentioned earlier, most crypto projects were built by a software company but are legally owned and operated by a non-profit. This magical setup seems to protect most crypto projects from regulation. Regardless, almost every crypto project has some sort of registered entity behind it, and you'd be surprised at how difficult it can be to identify this entity, even with larger projects. Now, more often than not, the name of the entity that's noted in the terms and or privacy policy pages of a crypto project's website is a software company or non-profit with a similar name. If you find a company that doesn't sound similar at all, then try and Google around to see if you can find any information about it. In my experience, Crunchbase should have the information you're looking for, which is stuff like when the company was founded, who founded it, and where it's based. This is the point at which you want to start double-checking that everything you heard from the founder is accurate. Remember that Crunchbase isn't always correct, but if the dates, company names, and locations are completely off, then that is a red flag. Either that or you're looking at the wrong company. Once you've found the entity behind the project, check to see if they have a website too and go through absolutely everything there as well. Take notes as you go along and make sure to check if they have a blog or Medium page. 
set those aside for later. Now, having scrolled down to the bottom of a crypto project's website, you should see all the other pages that the main page redirects to. Not all crypto project websites are organized like this, and what's annoying is that some of them will even have links to pages that aren't mentioned at the bottom. That's why we go through every single link to see where it leads, and you'd be surprised at the crazy stuff we sometimes find. I suggest doing the same if you have the time, but unless crypto is your full time job, you might want to stick to the pages that are easier to access. Pages to pay extra close attention to are any related to tokenomics, roadmaps, or milestones, FAQ pages, and especially the developer documentation. In terms of tokenomics, you need to ask yourself one simple question, and that's whether there are enough demand drivers for that coin or token to outweigh the new supply and sell pressure coming from early investors, the team, the nonprofit behind the project, and miners or validators. You'll find that most cryptocurrencies don't make the cut on this front, but so long as a project has a unique value proposition that's easy to understand and a large community which believes in whatever vision it has, speculation alone could be enough for a pump. We'll come back to that later. Now, roadmaps and milestones are similarly straightforward. Ideally, they will make the supply and demand equation more attractive for the coin or token, or they will at least be significant enough to stir speculation among current and future holders of that coin or token. You will have to be the judge of this. Now, FAQ pages are important because this is where you'll often find the issues the project has. This can be something as simple as user experience issues or something as complex as minor or validator centralization coming from the entities behind the project. Be wary of regulations as well. Now, the developer documentation contains all the details that help you differentiate a project from its competitors. This includes stuff like tokenomics, staking rewards, staking parameters, transaction speeds, governance processes, and even how a cryptocurrency's blockchain history is being stored. Some of you may remember that we found something about that last bit in our video about MENA protocol, and you can find out what it was by watching our video about that project using the link in the description. Anyhow, the fourth step to researching a crypto project is to go through its blog and or Medium page from start to finish. That's right, from first post to most recent post, and always check both because the overlap isn't always perfect. Similarly to watching interviews with the founder of a project, scrolling through blog and medium posts from start to finish will give you an idea of how the project has progressed and whether it has stayed the course or has repeatedly changed its focus. As with watching interviews, reading through blog and medium posts will occasionally reveal some details about the project that can't be found anywhere else, and more often than not, it's something that can be a huge red flag. In our experience, these red flags have related mostly to tokenomics, as the earliest posts of many projects explain exactly how their coins or tokens were distributed, who invested, how long the tokens are vesting for, and so on. And yes, we cover every blog post too. Now, crypto projects also tend to reveal their roadmaps and upcoming milestones in a blog or medium post. And if you pay close attention, you can sometimes find milestones even though they haven't been explicitly mentioned. For example, if you can see that the project you're examining has partnered with a bigger project that you know to be good, this could be a sign that the project you're examining is on the radar of other big crypto projects and possibly even crypto exchanges and institutional investors. Logically, this foreshadows top tier exchange listings and potentially post-ICO funding, which you'll recall is a telltale sign of a quality project. The same logic also works in reverse. If the crypto project you're examining is already fairly big, you're likely to come across many up-and-coming projects it has partnered with or are part of its ecosystem. This could let you get in early or even participate in the ICO for that up-and-coming cryptocurrency. If you're looking for a guide on how to find promising cryptocurrency ICOs, look no further than the link in the description. 
The fifth step to researching a crypto project is to go through all the headlines it has made, if any. If you watched our first video about how to research cryptocurrencies, you'll know that Cointelegraph, Coindesk, Decrypt, and CryptoSlate are good resources to use here. A fifth crypto news site to consider is The Block, but keep in mind that it's apparently not possible to sort news headlines by date when you search, so pay extra close attention to the dates. As you might have gathered, this step involves entering the name of the crypto project you're researching into the five largest crypto news sites, ordering the headlines chronologically, and sifting through them all in almost the same way as you did for the blog or Medium posts. You'll quickly notice that each crypto media outlet has its biases, so don't be too surprised if you find zero headlines about the crypto project on one or more of these news sites. Don't let the headlines go to your head too much either, because again, there's bias. If there are absolutely no crypto news headlines to be found about the project you're researching, then that might be a red flag, depending on how long the project has been around for. Newer crypto projects won't get much media coverage. Go figure. Now, those of you who read the crypto news regularly will know that Cointelegraph actually shows you how many people have read an article. This is extremely helpful when sifting through crypto headlines related to the project you're researching because you can gauge how much interest there is. The main thing you're looking for here, however, is whether there's anything important you might have missed when skimming through all those blog and Medium posts. More often than not, you'll find a few important announcements that can't be found anywhere else for whatever reason, and sometimes these announcements can make or break a crypto project. And because these crypto news sites search every article based on a keyword, you might also come across similar projects that might be worth exploring, or even discover that there are additional partnerships and investors beyond what you've found so far. So this brings me to the final step to researching a crypto project, and that's to go through as much of the social media history and activity of the project and its founders as you possibly can. If this sounds like a daunting task, that's because it is. But a great way to warm up is to start with a project and its founders' LinkedIn profiles. Now, to be honest, the posts on LinkedIn aren't all that important. What's important is where the crypto project is reportedly located, where the founder is reportedly located, and whether the locations and dates all line up with what you've found out so far. So long as it's all similar, it's fine. If not, red flag. The next social media sites to check are Telegram, Discord, and Reddit, and chances are you'll only be able to find these for the actual project, not the founder. It's irrelevant anyways, because what you're checking for here is how many members are participating in these social media channels. If you have questions about the project that you couldn't find answers to, these are the best places to ask, and a few members of the Coin Bureau team do exactly that during their research. Just be aware that you're likely to get a lot of bias, so ask politely, and if you don't get an answer, then leave. The last social media site to check is Twitter, and this is where things can get overwhelming very quickly. This is why it's wise to focus on the Twitter profile of the project's founder if the main account has too many tweets to dig through. Chances are the founder will have retweeted the most important ones. If you're lucky, the main Twitter account won't have an absurd amount of activity, so you'll be able to go back in time by at least a few months, if not more. Pro tip, load up all the tweets you can and use the search option in your browser to look for keywords if you're looking for something specific. Now, the main thing to look out for on Twitter is stuff like engagement, important announcements, potential milestones, and even other crypto projects and personalities worth following. You should also check when the Twitter profile was created to see if it all lines up with when the project itself was founded. And finally, take a second to assess just how large of a following this project actually has. It's easy to buy Twitter followers, and there seems to be no shortage of crypto bots and spam. So don't be spooked if there's a large discrepancy between follower counts there and elsewhere. If a crypto project's social media presence is next to non-existent, or if there is next to no engagement, then you're either very early or the project is dead in the water. After all, how can the coin or token pump if there's nobody there to feel the FOMO? 
Jokes aside, if you follow the six-step process I just mentioned and use it in conjunction with the other stuff you've learned about crypto fundamentals from this channel, you should have no issues finding at least a few cryptocurrencies that will go 100x when the next bull market comes around. If you're wondering where to start, well, go to the first page of CoinMarketCap and start at Bitcoin. Go through the first 200 or 300 cryptocurrencies by market cap, and by the end of the process, you should have at least a couple of dozen promising candidates. I'm completely serious. Now, don't rush and don't stress, because the bear market isn't going anywhere anytime soon. If you're wondering just how much time you have left, you can check out our video about when the bear market will end using the link in the description. Till then, happy hunting. And that's all for today's video about how to research cryptocurrencies for the next bull market. If you found it helpful, smash that like button. If you want to make sure you don't miss the next one, subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell. If you prefer shorter form crypto content, check out Coin Bureau Clips. And if you prefer longer form crypto content, check out the Coin Bureau podcast. If you want to follow me, I'm active on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. If you want to follow me, follow the crypto market, join my Telegram channel. If you want to see what cryptos I hold as part of my portfolio, subscribe to my weekly newsletter. And if you're looking for some crypto apparel for the summer, check out the Coin Bureau merch store. And if you're wondering where you can find all this stuff, head down to the description. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon. Until then, keep calm and hodl on.